Welcome back, everyone, my fellow yarn nerds. Uh, grab a beverage and let's chat. Okay, so welcome back to my channel, everybody. This is the Midwest Stitches channel. My name is Danielle, and this is my channel where I talk about knitting, crocheting, sewing, whatever crafty things that I might want to do. And today, uh, episode 10, I think, nine, <laughs> something like that. We're getting ready to hit that milestone of nine episodes. Uh, and I'm just looking down at my notes. Uh, we have one finished object, yay. Uh, a whip to talk about, actually kind of two whips. We'll talk about that in a minute. And um, future cast ons, mail, and a couple of other kind of uh, business related things, uh, life things, some exciting stuff, etc. We'll get into all that at the end. Um, today I'm drinking. I'm drinking some iced coffee right now. It is kind of hot here today. Um, it's but it's windy. It's weird. It's, it's a weird weather day in Nebraska. <laughs> so here's some iced coffee because we were recording at like four o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. So anyway, you can find me on Instagram at midwest.stitches or on my website at midweststitches.com. All right, so let's get into the knitting and the crafting. Um, and if you're curious about my iced coffee, all that is, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty basic with iced coffee, unless it's like a special one I get from the coffee shop. Uh, it's just leftover coffee from the coffee pot this morning. I just threw some ice in it and some half and half. And that's how I like it. So, our one finished object, which I am so excited about. Oop, let me just grab it. Our, da 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 my oh let me hold that up right my halloween town socks or hocus pocus socks as i think they should be called i've said that many times before um so these i started back in the fall this is the first one that i did this is the one i just finished and i don't know if you can tell but they're just slightly different i knit this one right here the first one um a little bit longer cuff just about um 10 rounds, I think, longer. So this was like 50 rounds for the leg and this was 40 rounds. And this I knit with a 2.25 millimeter needle. And this one I knit with a two millimeter. And I really like the tighter gauge that I'm getting with the two millimeter. And I think I measured it and it's actually a lot of stitches per inch. I think it's like nine stitches per inch with this, but I like the way that it fits my foot um, with more negative ease. So I think I'm gonna stick with that for now with my socks. Or, I don't know, I might go down to like 60 stitches if I wanna use my 2.25, cause I don't want those to just sit there and go like to waste, <laughs> if you will. Um, I wanna use them and I have a lot of them. So maybe I'll do that and see how those fit. You know, 60 stitches with a slightly bigger needle. See if I get a same or a similar fit. Um, and as you can see, I gave up on the two at a time on two circulars. Um, I kind of did that for two reasons. Number one, um, I the two circulars method, even for one at a time, I probably wouldn't do because the needles like poke you, like if it was in my lap or my stomach or something, it just, the extra needles flopping around poke you and I don't like that feeling at all. So that probably won't be something I do. I might try two at a time again on Magic Loop. I talked about that in Vlogmas. I tried that for my Cozy Knitter Advent socks. And of course, those didn't work out because I was using the wrong needle size for the type of yarn. So, um, and I haven't tried, tried two at a time with Magic Loop again, but I think if I did do two at a time, I would like that better because then you don't have all those extra needles poking you. <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me. Um, 
So yes, I love these. I love the colors. Oh my gosh, they're just, I'm so happy to have these done and off my needles. So I can't wait to wear them. Now that I've shown them, I can take all the markers out and I can actually wear them. Um, yes. And oh, I did the toes different too. So the first one, um, I actually think I did a much wider toe. I was in ex an experimental phase uh, back in the fall, but yeah, you can see much wider, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stitches <laughs> on the toe. And that was more of a wedge toe. And then this one, of course, I did my, um, the rounded toe. Oh, dog's shaking the, the stand. And then I did my, oh, I'm so sorry. I did my Russian grafting on that, on the end. Still loving that. Uh, I am still working on the video for all my tips and tricks. I almost have all the clips that I need to put that together and get it out. So that's very exciting too, even though, like I said in the last video, I am not the expert. So I forgot to mention that yarn is from Ritz Fiber. It's called Halloween Town. Or at least that's what it was called when I bought it. I don't know if she's changed the name or not. And I have all of this left. I have almost 38 grams. So, I don't know. Uh, I really am dying to start a crochet granny stripe with all of my sock leftovers. And I'll kind of talk about that in the future cast-ons or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have an idea for that that I kind of wanted to see what you guys thought, like your opinions. So there's that. That's my only finished object. Yay. Um, and so obviously since I gave up on the two at a time, my only whip <clears throat> is this guy. Uh, I'm on the heel flap. I'm about halfway through the heel flap. I started that yesterday. This is my cottage shed socks. It's the second one. Um, I'm really hoping to have this done by the end of the month. My goal is April 30th. I'm done with this. If before then, great, but at least by then, um, cause this is my only real whip on the needles that I'm working on. I can hardly believe that, especially with all of the whips that I've been finishing from like the fall and everything. It's kind of crazy that I only have one to work on. That's, that has its whole other set of pros and cons, but currently I'm enjoying just having the one project to knit on because I'm working on those wholesale orders still, which you can kind of see a bunch of them here <laughs> in progress in the back. Um, so only having one knitting project when I just need to take a break uh, is perfect. So I'm thinking by the weekend I'll have the heel flap and all the gusset uh, done and then what I've been doing, like I said in the last video, um, when we watch TV, I try to do like 10 rounds. And that's kind of my goal each day is 10 rounds. Um, and, unless I'm working on <laughs> like a flat part, then I try to just do a little bit at a time, whatever I can tolerate. And then when I get to the gusset, um, picking up the stitches, I always try to do that all in one, one whack uh, doing the gusset decreases, mostly because I lose track of where I am if I'm on a gusset decrease or not. Because, you know, if you've done a heel flapping gusset, you know, one side you're decreasing, the other side you're not. It's just the order in which you do them. Anyway, I won't ramble on too much about that, but yeah, so we're there and I'm actually, I actually moved this to a different bag because I was just dying to use it. Oh, make sure my needles don't fall out. I moved this into my wildflowers bag. I have, I think two of this size left small. I sold all the medium ones. Those are all gone. Um, out of the spring collection, this was my most popular and I can see why, cause it's just a beautiful print. Um, so yeah, if you wanted one of these, there's still two left. So, and this is the small zipper. So there's that. Uh, sip of coffee or whatever you're drinking. So good. Um, okay. So future 
cast-ons and a kind of whip. My second whip that I talked about, we'll, we'll go into that first. So I just wanted to show this. This is kind of my accountability to you all <laughs> and to myself. Um, this is, I talked about this a little bit briefly. Oh, there's a glare. Um, this is my Hocus Pocus shawl. There's all the yarn for it. I started this back in the fall because I really wanted something to make with all of these yarns. And obviously I have not gotten not I have not worked on this at all. So here it is. Here's the progress. <laughs> Hopefully next time there will be more. My goal is uh, instead of Scrappy Sunday projects, because I don't really have any Scrappy Sunday projects currently, I think I'm going to work on this on Sundays. This will be like my Scrappy Sunday project. That way each week, and if I want to pick it up more throughout the week, obviously I can, but that way at least one day out of the week I'm working on this because I would really like to have this done by October. And I think that's completely possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I have honestly no idea how big this is going to turn out because this is three 100 gram skeins, obviously. So I would imagine this is going to be a fairly large shawl and it'll be my first one I've ever done. And the pattern I got off of YouTube is just like a basic triangle shawl. It's nothing fancy. So, um, yeah, it was just a, a, a free video. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. This is to hold me accountable to work on it because it's been lingering because I've been trying to do all the socks and finish all the socks and bags and all the other things that come up. Um, okay, so future cast-ons. I want to get that sock done by May 1st, so I have nothing on my needles except for the Hocus Pocus shawl. I'm not really counting that, though. <laughs> but what I want to cast on, I showed this, oh gosh, forever ago. Uh, I talked about it and I frogged it and then I got different yarn because I didn't like the yarn I had, but it's been ready to go. So these are my yarns. I got the needles stuck in there. I'm all ready to go and I'm holding it in this bag. This is my I Love Knitting bag. It's got the gray gingham in there, it's drawstring. Um, I still have, I think, every size of these. Actually, no, that's not true. Uh, I think I only have small and medium. I think I sold all the large ones. Uh, but these are still available in my shop too, if you like those. And these are being obviously held in my yarn cozies, which I love. Uh, but this is from Breaking Yarn. Oh, that's her old tag. There's Breaking Yarn, McKaylee from Breaking Yarn. Um, the yellow is called Hazmat Suit and the black is called Jane Margolis. Uh, and I actually got the yellow. It was on a, I think she, I don't know if she called it an oopsie sale or something, but basically it was uh, discounted skeins because the color didn't take the way she wanted it to, which, McKaylee, I don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. <laughs> but this color is perfect. So I'm making a hat uh, for a friend of mine. He requested an Iowa Hawkeyes hat last year for his birthday, which is in June. And I didn't obviously get around to making it. So I want to cast this on May 1st to be my May 1st cast on. And he wants like a long stripey stocking cap. And then I'm going to duplicate stitch the word Hawkeyes in there. And I think I'm going to do duplicate stitch the black onto the yellow. So anyway, there's, that's a future cast on May 1st. Um, I'm trying not to have too many projects going at once. I talked about that. And um, I think having like maybe like a hat and a pair of socks going at once, if I <clears throat> feel like that, then that I think will be okay for me. And I won't feel too overwhelmed. Um, but with that, I'll jump right into mail because mail kind of coincides with my future cast on. So I'll show the first one because this is... The other thing, the second thing I want to cast on May 1st, and it is this beautiful yarn. Oh, look at that. So this is from obviously Area 51 Fibers. This is the, where's the thing? This is the May Flowers colorway that she dyed for our collab. I finally got mine in the mail 
and um yeah i i'm so excited to cast this on i'm gonna be doing the cold brew socks from lofty loops and i cannot wait i'm so excited to knit these up um i mean just look at all those pretty shades of yellow and green and pink and there's like just oh it's just beautiful um if you saw the pictures <laughs> on my website or on my instagram you'll have seen how this knits up so there's that one that's the second cast on for may um so then all the other mail i got along with that order um uh she also sent me this mm, i showed this i think i showed this on instagram but oh my gosh can you even stand how beautiful those colors are? This is obviously a Halloween color. This is called Get Witchy. And look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just love it. So this is like the third, oh, I don't know. The third, I think, Halloween color I've gotten from her. So oh, they're still going to... I fall socks, Halloween socks, Christmas socks. I have all the yarn to do all the socks uh, <laughs> that are themed. And then I got this sock set from her. This is, um, those are 100 gram skeins. This is a 50 gram and a, a 20 gram, I think. A 20 or a 10 gram, I don't know. I don't remember, but I think it's a 20 gram. <laughs> uh, but this is a Gilmore Girls colorway. This is called uh, Queen of Ice Cream. And I'm, I'm very excited to knit these up too. I'm, let's be honest, I'm excited to knit up all of my <laughs> yarn that I get and all the yarn that I have. Like there's just not enough hours in the day. Um, and then earlier this week, I got in another order. These were all like, cause I've said before she lives in Canada. So the shipping takes a little while. Um, but she had these two beautiful colorways and one is for me, one is for Adrian. So I got this kind of Valentine's inspired colorway, but it's called True North Speckled Donut. And it is, if you go on her website and look at, cause you can look at the full catalog of stuff that she has. This is on there, it's gorgeous. Um, and this is actually, um, she has a, these ready to ship right now for, and they're on sale. So if you like that, go check her out. Uh, and then I got this because Adrian, uh, this color is called Jane and it's inspired by a hat that's worn by a character in Firefly, which Adrian loves that show or loved that show. It's obviously not on anymore. Uh, so I got this for him to make him socks, although he wants a hat out of it. Uh, can you do that question for my fellow self-striping yarn lovers? Um, can you take a self-striping that's meant for uh, socks, <laughs> dyed for socks striped specifically, and turn it into a hat? I mean, let me know. Have Has anybody ever done that? Because I don't know. So how does that work out with the stripes? So anyway, there's that. Uh, so yeah. And then I have one more piece of mail. I know I said in previous episodes, I was going to not buy yarn, but these were all ordered <laughs> before, you know, I just, I have a problem. I mean, anybody else raise your hand? Uh, especially with her yarn. Like I try to like resist and I do a pretty good job, but her self-striping colorways, they're just amazing. Amazing. Like she's a genius. I cannot say that enough. I love it. So this sock set, I just got in the mail this week. This is from Heidi and Lana. And if you watch the crazy sock lady, you'll have seen a Heidi and Lana yarn before in the journey socks, which everybody's talking about. Um, and I, I got on her website cause I saw this set. This is raw, du no duck egg and milk chocolate. So duck egg, and milk chocolate, obviously. And I was curious because her fingering weight yarn is a different blend than I've seen anywhere else. It's a 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. And it definitely has a different feel. It's 
it's a little bit rougher and a little bit more rustic feeling. Um, and it's obviously, oh, here's a good, yeah, it's a, it's a lot thicker than, um, even the 8020 or 8515s that I have. So I'm curious <laughs> how this is going to knit up for my gauge, um, or what I'm going to do with it. I mean, obviously it's a sock set, but, um, I don't know. I don't know what I should do with this. If you have any ideas, what you think besides socks that this would be good for, uh, drop those in the comments below. I'd be curious, uh, what you guys think. Cause I'm, I'm got it in the mail and I already knew it was a 90, 10, but I, and I never seen that blend before in person. So I didn't know how thick it was going to be. And now I don't know with the way that I knit with my gauge that this is going to be good. So we'll see. We'll just roll with bunches and go from there. <laughs> um, oh, and with that order, I really only bought that because I wanted these. <laughs> So I felt like I needed to buy something else. But I have these cute little copper snips from her. How stinking adorable are those? They're the same size as like the super snips. But they're copper. And I love them. I love these. So these are going to go in my little notions tin thingy that I have. Um, so yeah. Um Okay, just looking at my notes again. Uh, so that's it for mail. Um, yeah, and okay, so I had somebody comment, I think on my last video, or maybe the video before, one of them. Recently, um, she's, she loved the spring collection, uh, but she was going to wait for the summer collection. Um, and I never really talked about this, but... I probably won't have a summer collection. I'm only going to release basically one more, uh, at least that's the current plan, one more bag type into the shop um, between now and May. And I've already shown it. It's the rainbow, um, painted rainbow or whatever. Maybe that's what I'll call it, painted rainbow. Um, the snap bags. I will have small and medium. I'm, I'm working on those. They're back here in this area being worked on. So I'll have some of those, but that will be it for releases. Uh, I really am going to try and take the summer off because last year is when I started my business last summer. I, I, I say June 2nd, I kind of started it before then, like the sewing and stuff, but I officially launched it like at the beginning of June, end of May last year. So we're coming up on a year anniversary. Yay. Um, but I didn't take the summer off. I was so just trying to make all of the things and get ahead and just full bore <laughs> with my new business. And, you know, and I, I loved every minute of it, but you know, I want to take the summer off. We have a pool in our backyard. We're fortunate enough to have one and I didn't get to enjoy it last year. And it was actually the first summer that we lived in this house with the pool. So I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. So I'm making a conscious choice this year to take a little time off, enjoy the summer, just knit, make things for myself, personal makes that I've been wanting to make and haven't had the time for. Um, yeah, so there won't really be a summer collection. I do have fabrics that are kind of summery, but um, maybe next summer I will have them available. Uh, so yeah, sorry <laughs> for those of you that might've been looking forward to maybe a summer collection. I probably won't have one. Um, I do have two people I'm collabing with, but I can't say yet <laughs> that I'm working on. Uh, they will be releasing those bags in the summer. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I'll probably announce it on my Instagram and stuff like that. So you can buy those if you are looking for their you know, sort of summer related. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And okay. So, uh, I want to talk about a couple of other things real quick, sort of 
business related, personal. Um, I am going to the, I'll start with this one, the exciting news. <laughs> uh, one month from yesterday, because this is the 22nd of April, I will be at the Kentucky Sheep and Fiber Festival. Oh, I'm so excited. It'll be my first fiber festival. I've never been to one. I didn't even know that was a thing until last year, really. <laughs> Um, but apparently we have one in Nebraska, um, a couple of hours away from us. And that actually, I think is this weekend. Oh crap. Pretty sure it's this weekend, <laughs> but I'm obviously busy. I'm on a, a deadline for these, so I won't be going to that, but I'm going to be in Tennessee. I have family that lives in Tennessee a couple of hours from the Kentucky Sheep and Fiber Festival. And cause my niece and nephew are graduating high school the Friday before the festival, so I'll be up there for that and I'm going to drive up to Lexington where the festival is and go to that. And I can't wait. I looked at the list of vendors today. There are so many of them. I'm so excited. So, um, yes, if any of you are going to be there, you know, let me know and maybe we can do like a little meetup or something. If, you know, a little hangout with my internet friends, <laughs> um, like I've said before, I don't have other knitters in my real life. So meeting up with other people who share a love of yarn and knitting and crocheting and all of the grandma things, if you will, as people, as my real life friends call it, <laughs> uh, would be nice. You know, people who understand the love of the craft. So I, I purchased a new sewing machine. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about it. So I watch McKaylee from Breaking Yarn and I think it was two episodes ago, maybe three on her channel. She talked about how since she started her business, she hadn't spent any of the money that she made on anything that she really wanted. She just put it back in the business as far as buying more supplies, etc., and not buying a tool or something that would enhance her business. Um, and I totally get that. And we kind of message back and forth about that. And I, that really spoke to me because I've been the same way. Like since I started last year, all of the money that I've made, either I've saved to be able to buy more supplies to make more stuff, or I have bought more stuff with that money to make some of the collections that have come out. Um, and a few tools here and there, things like that. But I haven't spent it on anything that I've like personal that I've wanted. And so the sewing machine that I bought, it's, it can be for the business, but it's mostly personal. It's something I wanted. Um, I bought an industrial sewing machine. It's a walking foot. If you know anything about sewing, that means that it can sew over a lot of layers, uh, like vinyl and leather, denim, like thicker things. And I am I've been wanting this for like over a year. I, when I, before I started making project bags, little backstory, before I started making project bags, I really wanted, like, I watched people make like purses and things like that. And I'd made like some other types of bags for myself, just personal, you know, like a boxy pouch or, you know, useful items that I wanted. That's how I kind of got into sewing. And I started watching these people on YouTube that make these gorgeous tote bags and handbags and purses and backpacks. And just, I was just in awe because I'm like, they're so fun. Like when you make it yourself, you can make it whatever you want, whatever color fabric, whatever material, uh, the possibilities are obviously endless. So, and, and I can't do that on my domestic machine. It can take a lot. She's a, she's a horse, but, uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't work for this stuff that I wanted to do. Cause I want to make things with like vinyl, waterproof canvas, wax canvas, uh, maybe some leather pieces here and there, who knows, you know, and I, the layers start to add up as you, you have those thicker materials as you're folding them and you're making the things, it gets thicker and thicker and you need a good heavy duty machine to sew through those and make those types of bags. So that's what I got. I'm excited about that. Um, 
I mostly got it, like I said, to make like bags and purses and whatever else for myself, but I'm maybe hoping that I can expand that into, you know, the customer base I have now. Um, cause you know, they're just, they're really fun and they're one of a kind. And, you know, so if that's something you're interested in seeing, I'm going to show like the stuff that I make on here for myself and, you know, maybe we can go from there and see what you guys think. Um, I'm just, I'm really excited about it because you can do so much. I can make wallets and just, oh, I'm just dreaming about all of the things I want to make with it. The possibilities are endless. So, um, and that obviously means I can make project bags, like higher end ones with vinyl or leather. And those would obviously be more expensive because the materials are more expensive, but you know, a little bit higher quality material, thicker. Um, yeah, so we'll see. You, you'll see some purses on here, some tote bags probably. We'll <laughs> and I might sell them on my website if I just, you know, want to make one and just practice and sell those on there. So, but that's all stuff I'll talk about later. Um, but yes, I'm very excited. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported my business over the last year because I couldn't have made that purchase without your support of buying my project bags, my yarn cozies, any of the things um, that I sold. I couldn't have done that without, without that. So uh, thank you so much to all the people that have purchased and loved the bags and shared my business on Instagram. You know, it's um, been amazing. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do, I think I might do like an anniversary sale coming up. We'll see. Um, I might do something else that kind of ties into the last thing I want to talk about briefly. Um, here in May sometime, you might see some website changes. If you frequent my website, uh, I'm thinking about changing platforms for my website, mostly because um, my, uh, I use Wix and you get like a promotional price for like a year and then subsequent years you have to pay like <laughs> double the price for the website. And while it's been great, I've had no issues. Um, I can't really justify the cost mostly because there are months where I don't sell anything and that's okay. Um, but having that kind of eat into what I'm making, I can't really justify it. So, um, what I'm going to, what I think I'm going to do, I'm like 95% sure the way I'm going to go is I'm going to go with Square. They offer a website builder, kind of like Wix. It's really basic, um, but you can use it for free and they only charge you for the card transactions. Basically, that's all that you have to pay for. Uh, well, when I say website changes, obviously the look will be different, the the interface of it, and um, for now, when you if you go in um, at the website, the website address, I think it's like Midwest Stitches dot Square dot online or something like that. I don't really have it up and running yet. I just started creating it, but it won't be just Midwest Stitches. I'm still gonna own Midwest Stitches, and if you put that in, it will lead you to that. So uh, that's just kind of a warning, don't be alarmed. It is still my website, it's still my product. Um, I just wanted to put that out there early. So I think what I might do for a sale, um, I might I might do a sale sometime in May, basically like a, a um, I don't know, what I'm going to call it. <laughs> I think I'm going to call it like help me clear out my inventory or something or website, moving website sale. <laughs> um, because I can't bring my inventory that I have already entered over from Wix to the Square site. So I have to put all of those in again. And I have a lot of stuff on there. <laughs> I have like almost 200 uh, products on there. Um, between the variations and all that kind of stuff. But so I might have a sale to kind of like help me clear out the inventory so there's less I have to enter in. <laughs> um, so I'll obviously announce that on here and on Instagram 
probably through email too if you're an email subscriber that will definitely come that way as well and the email subscriber thing i'm pretty sure i'm still working everything out but i think i can take the contacts list from my old website and take those over to my new website so you'll still get you know emails with coupons and things like that so uh it'll basically be the same it's just the web address will look a little different um but it's free to use and it's still an e-commerce site it's i can still take payments with credit cards or debit cards uh this google pay apple pay i think they have on there um so hopefully it'll be a good move let me know what you think about that down there it's just i well i have made decent sales there are some months where i don't have any sales and it's like, you know, the Wix stuff is almost like $30 a month. And that might seem like not a lot. But if you're not making anything, you know, it doesn't all balance out. And um, if I can save a little bit of money, uh, and any of my fellow business owners will probably understand this. Uh, if I can save a little bit of money on the website piece of it and still be able to sell you my product and ship it to you. And, you know, just everything's the same pretty much. Um, but not have to spend that same amount of money on the website. Um, yeah, it's just not as customizable. I think that's really the main difference. Like, uh, it's very basic. Um, you can't move things around as much and customize the way that it looks as, as much. And I don't really care about that. I don't know if anybody else does either. I mean, I just, I want to just put this stuff out there for sale and you know, if you like it and you want to buy it, here you go. Here it is. Um, you know, have any questions or comments, you know, leave those down below. Let me know what you think about, um, the website stuff, the Fiverr festival and, um, the potential for maybe purses or handbags or tote bags or, uh, any of that stuff. I, kind of, I haven't played around with the machine yet, obviously. Um, I have to set it up and do all that, you know, and practice on it, but I might do some, like, you know, some custom orders or something for stuff like that. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, let me know what you think about that stuff. And yeah, I think that's it for this very rambly video. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And leave your comments down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching guys, bye.